Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in today. We have, I have a bit of a thrift flip video today, meaning um, my pile is getting huge and I need to get some of these smalls done. So most of them require painting more often than not. Um, but you know, it's kind of a mix of different looks and different finishes. So I'm bringing you along and we'll see. So the first up is this guy. Um, kind of, just kind of cool, right? Like a little oil can, I'm thinking it is. Like an old, doesn't have the lid and I think you'd pour it out here, but you know, it's kind of painted out like really old toll house kind of thing. Um, you know what, I decided I wanna go a little bold. So we're gonna start off by painting it red. Um, this is DIY Marquee, you know, just because you know, some of the other things that I'm doing are more subtle and I just, <laughs> I just can't do that with everything. It's just not in my nature. So, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun and I'm gonna get this guy painted out in red. So nice, bright kind of fire engine red. We're going to cover over, um, we're going to cover over all that lovely Toll House painting. My apologies if you had done that, if you had done the painting. Um, it's just, you know, it's had its day. How did day it's done? So I'm gonna get this painted out and then we will be back to finish it off once that's all done. I just wanna show you um, a couple of the other projects. Okay, stop painting then. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm gonna paint that off camera and I keep going. All right, so let me show you some of the other things first. Then I'm gonna paint and then we'll come back. So I do have this angel, um, just, you know, kind of, just kind of floating there. I'm going to do a bit of a, of a finish on this. Um, and it's going to start with a color that I didn't bring, um, in petticoat pink. So I'm going to start off with a pale pink in DIY on this one. And I left it in the stash of paint that I was looking through. I gotta get that going. I also have this little birdhouse. Um, it's kind of in pieces and it's got stuff stuck in it, faux stuff stuck in it, so I'm getting rid of that. Um, and I'm just gonna paint it out white. I don't mind the green, so I'm going to dry brush this so that I get some um, so more of the green shows. And uh, I'm gonna paint the base a darker gray, kind of in a weathered wood. So the green will show through. I'm gonna get rid of the crap that's in that fake bird hole. And um, that's the painting happening on it. I have this big, heavy kind of resin or plastic clock. It's really quite heavy. It's kind of in a fake amber. Um, so it's gonna get painted white, beadboard. So that's white. This is dry brushed white. Um, this hen is gonna get painted gray. So it's gonna be gray in weathered wood. And what else we got going? Oh, uh, we have a pig. I'm leaving the pig because it, it needs a little bit more work than just paint. So I'm gonna get started. So painting red, painting pink, weathered wood, white with weathered wood, which is a gray, and this clock is painted white. I'm going to paint him, this is the, the pig, piggy bank. Um, I'm gonna paint him in the weathered wood the gray to start, and then we're gonna do more of a finish, but. He's pretty slick, so I'm gonna give him a bit of a base. So I'm gonna get on with the painting and then we'll come back with some of the more decorative aspects of this, some of the finishing. But 
um, I think it's fun to always see the thought process and I'm always looking at how saleable are these in my shop. So if you're a booth owner, then perfect. See how your thinking fits with mine. Different customer base perhaps, but we'll see. But I think that for those of you at home that are looking at just maybe zhuzhing up or changing up some of your home decor, hopefully that you walk away with some ideas of different things that you can do to change your life. We've got some more steps to go on some of our projects. This one, because I have two more steps to it, we're gonna jump in on. Um, we've got one coat of the red covering up um, a lot of the patterns, doing a good job doing that, but we are gonna zhuzh it up a little bit more. I only did one coat of the red, so it's not perfect coverage, but because I'm doing more to it, I think it falls into the category of good enough. <laughs> All right, so what I do have is some pennies from heaven, which is the copper patina, um, and I have a little bit of water because I just want to create a wash. So I have a little bit more water over there if I need to add a bit. So I want to add the copper as a very translucent coat over this. And so we don't need it full strength for that. And as I can see, it's gonna go, it's gonna go far. Now the copper really looks good with the red underneath, and that's why we did that. <laughs> but I'm gonna get this copper coat on, set this off to the side to dry, uh, because we still have another coat of of something to go on there. We want to do more to this little guy. Let me move him out of the way. To this little guy. We've got our, our pink coat on there. And again, I just did one. So it's, it's not perfect coverage, but because I'm gonna do more, it's good enough. <laughs> Seems to be the mantra of the day. So, what I do have, let me move that cup out of the way, is I have a little bit of French millinery, which is this lovely, soft, mauve kind of color from DIY. One of my favorite colors, to tell you the truth. You don't see a lot of people using it. I use it a lot. It's, um, it's kind of mauve kind of gray, it works great with the gray film. It's just so versatile, this. Um, and again, I'm adding a little bit of water. I wanna thin it out because I want it to be a little bit more of a wash. I have an old uh, rag here because what I want to do, and I'll show you on the base, is I just wanna kinda of dab this on and then Take it off, right? You could use the sponge if you wanted, right? Not a not a problem, but we're just kind of spattering it on there, and um, then letting it dry, and then I will be back for the next coat. Next up is our clock. So I am taking couple of wet wipes and I am just going to be wiping this back and this is the beauty of the DIY paint is that it wet distresses so beautifully so easily look at the base you don't have to work hard at it you don't have to build up a lot of dust I mean there's times that I do dry sanding times I do wet sanding sometimes I do both but this one is gonna be perfect with the wet sanding. So I am going to get this wet sanded and then let it dry. 
because there's a little bit more that I want to do to it before we possibly seal it. Our pig has a rough coat of the weathered wood and we are now going to do a quick little dry brush. So I've got a chip brush and I'm going to offload most of it and I'm just going to start to kind of do a bit of a dry brush over his surface. He's not, he's not, he's not done with this, but we're just building some layers. And really, I'm just kind of playing. I'm just kind of seeing, okay, what else do I want to do to him? So, I mean, it's possible I won't let the dry brush hang and I go, I go in another direction. Sometimes that happens, right? You never know. But I'm getting this layer on him. So what I am thinking I might do is take advantage of the copper wash that I just made and see what some of that looks like over this. But again, just very dry. Although I'm using the same brush, so it's not really very coppery anymore. It's kind of this creamy rose gold. Rose gold, white and a copper patina. Okay. How you discover some things. So I think what I'm gonna to wanna to do is now that I've started to do this, I wanna do this over the, the body of it, but then I think I wanna do some actual copper, so just some straight copper on it. Okay, we've got our little birdhouse. So it looks great with the weathered wood on the bottom and with that dry brush, letting that green paint that Ari had on show through. We just need a little bit of um, clear wax. Here it is. I'm going, I just had a clear wax brush. Just to seal this weathered wood paint. We hadn't sealed it. This isn't a problem. Um, I can't remember what paint I used. I think I just used beadboard, so we have to seal that too. I think I was originally thinking I was using all in one, but it was empty and for that little bit we didn't open a new can all right so this is all sealed now perfect so many cans over here all right so what we want to do is reattach the roof which is this copper sheeting and i am going to use these black tacks because they're super cute and they'll stand out against, just seeing if there are an existing hole that I wanna take advantage of here. There we go, oops. And so with this nail, I like the contrast. I like that it'll look a little bit more weathered wood. Okay, that's on. So cute. So we took out the grunge, but there's still a lot of um, odds and ends of things in there. So what I wanted to, to see, um, just to judge it up a little bit, was I'm thinking that we will attach a little bit of moss, just kind of hanging down. Kind of out of there nicely and maybe just stick a little tiny flower just you know so there super sweet not a lot of work it was just kind of sitting in pieces on the shelf at the thrift store and 
that's just kind of super cute little decor. I decided on the pig before I started adding bronze, I wanted to do a darker metallic. So this is Rust-Oleum um, Classic Bronze, um, which I just picked up from the hardware store for a different project. And now I am, because it only comes in big jars, <laughs> I'm using it for other things now. So, again, it's kind of like a, a really deep copper, you know? It's like if your penny had been all worn. So, I'm just dry brushing it on the same as I did the other paints. And then I'm gonna take that copper wash that we made. I have some of that left. And I'm gonna use a clean brush for it. And I'm going to, in, the, in that case, not dry brush it, but I'm gonna paint it over the entire surface so that we'll have that sheen of the copper over everything. But because we diluted it, it's gonna be um, a more translucent, right? It's, we're gonna be able to see all of these other layers and colors below it which in my head looks good. This time I have a little bit of apothecary and I do love the combination of apothecary um, with the petticoat pink, with the um, French millinery, just the tones all really work nicely together. And that's one of the things that you want to look for more than anything else. So, again, adding a bit of water, making a bit of a wash. We're just going to dab this on. Right. It is just about time to go home for the evening and I want to use up this wash. I don't want it to dry up on me. So I am going to put this copper wash over the top of my pig. So we're gonna get him covered in this, in this light wash and then leave him to dry overnight. Still have a couple of steps on a couple of projects. On this one, I have this container, which used to have crinoline paint in it, now has a wash in it. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit looser even because all I want to do over this now is to do my crinoline wash. And I'm doing it loose and then I am just taking relatively clean cloth and I'm just going to wipe it back and then we're gonna let this dry it's not quite done yet so again you know a number of steps but they're all easy steps right so the most is giving it some drying time but you can see how loose this is and we're just going over our paint and then wiping it back now, for our can, and you know, it's got a hole in the bottom, so it's not gonna hold water. I don't know, I don't know what it was for, but it is what it is. I am actually gonna do another wash over it. Um, so, toning down, toning down that uh, copper wash that we did, and this time I'm creating a wash with dark and decrepit. So again, these are sealers, so, all kind of done when it's done but we're just now adding kind of a darker wash over the top and this one I'm going to put on and then I'm going to kind of dab it so we're creating kind of that modeled textured look on it and then we're putting it to the side and letting it dry. Clock is just about done. Really what 
what we need to do is seal it. But before we seal it, what I'd like to do is just make the back a little bit more interesting. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little transfer from the um, pots, traditional pots transfer from IOD, and I'm just gonna stick this on the back. Now I'm doing this directly onto an unsealed painted surface, which it's had time, it's had overnight to dry, so it should be okay. And then I will just seal this all with clear wax. So apply the clear wax, wipe it back, let it dry, and then this one should be good to go. So I know that generally with the stamps, I mean with the uh, transfers, we say to apply it to, you know, a dry sealed surface, but you can apply it to dry paint. You just have to make sure that there's no oils that are leaking up through it, that the paint is totally dry. If it's um, dry to the touch, but it feels cold, it's not dry enough to apply the transfers. So you can see it's going on no problem. Okay, so the last little touch, I have some fancy farm girl and mine is pretty much dried up. So I'm just gonna spritz in some water, which ultimately then the clay absorbs and softens, but it gives me enough that I need because I want a fairly dry brush. And I'm just gonna go do kind of some light dry brushing around the edges. Make it look a little bit like moss or lichen has settled in. It just sort of, and you see how I haven't had to touch up more. So it's a really kind of light touch and you can see it around that edging. So I'm going to do that around all of the details, let it finish drying, wax it up, and then this guy's done. I have one last step for the can that I wanna do, and that is to apply some black transfers. So these are florals that are from the um, reef, the reef transfer from IOD. I've used it on other projects and these are just leftover little bits. So I just wanted to do a little bit of zhuzhing just around the circumference, not going up high, not going on the lid, just around the base. Um, and again, it's just the, the black, so it's not gonna be bold. It's not big, colorful flowers. You could leave it as it was or we could add these in. And I opted, obviously, <laughs> to adding these in. So I'm gonna put these around the circumference. You don't need to listen to that sound. Um, so I'm gonna put them around the base and then I think that's it for our projects. I'm kind of looking around, I lost track. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Six are done as soon as they do this. So I'll be back to show you each of them. And uh, we can just chat a little bit about it. All right. Today's thrift flip, and really, really any thrift flip um, video that I do is really designed to show you the things that you could look out for in a thrift store or even in your own home and just give you some ideas on what you can do with them. So, um, I expect that the things that are in my head are different than the things that are in your head. So you're taking a look at them when I show them and you're thinking, hmm, this is what I would do compared to what I do. You could say, uh, yeah, not so good, Cindy. Or, oh my gosh, I would never have thought of that. Or, huh, I don't like that so much for that item, but that gets me thinking about what I could do with these candlesticks I have. And that's really the idea. So. You know, this is a pretty basic makeover. I mean, one, I made sure that the clock was working first, popped the mechanism out. It was really heavy and kind of that amber color. It was old, just doing the white, distressing it back, 
And I think, again, just adding the little bit of the decor on the back um, with that IOD transfer, just, you know, you've got that real estate. Why not? And then that way, if somebody doesn't have it sitting so that it's just out on a table, you know, backed up to something, then it looks nice from the back as well. Our little birdhouse, because I'm starting to look for things for spring, just looks so much cuter now, right? It's got that little bit of flower, just that whitewashing. It looks a little bit brighter and uh, it's super cute. We have, oh, I, don't, I have to reach further. We have our finished chicken. So this is the weathered wood, which is kind of a, a dark grayish and then white waxed. But I think that you can see almost some of those white speckles coming through. I love that from the white texture that was underneath it. So as we were distressing back, we're starting to get some of that back, which is one of the reasons why I went darker on this because it was already light and, and those highs were light and I could use that in the finish. So we get a little bit more detail and he just looks super cute. Now. This guy. So this is, whoa, this is the finish. You can see that that wax brings out some of that green. You can see some of the other colors, a little bit of the pink, a little bit of the soft gray mauve. Um, we've got the uh, crinoline wash over top and it just sort of softens it, pulls it back together. And then dry brushing a little bit of that green underneath that just kind of gives it that old world, old worn look to it, which I love. Now we did some copper today, which Here's our little pig. So you can see that he's not uniform. He's got other colors popping through. We started with that weathered wood and we did some of those light washes and even did them in a kind of a dry brush so that we've got some of that bronze showing through and then we did the copper wash so it's, we're able to get them echoing and it gives it a more textured look. It definitely looks different than if it was just one solid coat. And that's one of the beauties of washes and things to keep in mind. Now you saw that oil can kind of finished. Um, I really liked doing that dark and decrepit glaze over the copper, kind of dulled it down. And I love it with those transfers. So with those black floral transfers over it, it just kind of adds to it being a decor piece. And really, that's what it's gonna be, right? It's not a functional anything. Not, certainly not with the big honking hole down there. <laughs> Which is a drilled hole, so I really don't know what it was used for. But it doesn't matter, because it's just super unique and super cute. And uh, I love that finish, that copper over the red with that dark and decrepit wash really cool and I guess maybe this this ended up I used washes quite a lot in this video but I hope that that gives you some ideas on different ways to be able to use some of your colored top coats and and uh, some of your paints that they don't have to be in a solid color to be able to create um, interesting layered looks and having the colors echoing up I hope that you got some tips to take away from today's video. Um, that's always my goal is you don't have to love everything, but maybe it just gives you some ideas to be able to tuck away to use for your next project. And hopefully you saw enough today to come back for the next one because I will definitely be here and look forward to seeing you. And until then, take care. <laughs>